Any entrepreneur is going to face competition. It's the nature of the game. All you can do is make your product the best it can be and hope that your consumers feel the same. But sometimes your timing is unique, making that competition even fiercer than normal. I was confident enough at the time that I knew that if people just tried the product, they'd come back for more. I knew that I had a special formula that was different and that stood out. That's Amy Wellsman, the founder and CEO of Palm, a global hand care brand that is taking the world by storm. After she had her first baby, Amy knew two things. She wanted to use her entrepreneurial prowess to carve out an idea of her own, and that she hated the smell and feel of the hand sanitizer she was constantly pouring all over her hands. She had an idea for a sustainably packaged, germ-killing line of hand care products that people liked using. But there was just one problem. She was planning on launching this business in the middle of a global pandemic, when the market was flooded with people trying to make hand sanitizer. So how did Amy stand out from the pack and make Palm into the powerhouse it is today? Find out on The Journey. There are always exciting things happening in the world of small business. The news that grabs the headlines, though, are always the highlights. The overnight successes, the billion-dollar IPOs, the massive exits. But just like your Instagram feed, that's never the whole story. Let's look deeper than the headlines and press photos. Underneath all of that is the real work of building something valuable and lasting. Don't get me wrong, I love crazy success stories and can be drawn in by those big flashy tales just as much as the next person. But we all know that what's more important than the destination is how you get there. It's the struggles you have to overcome and the insights you learn along the way that make you who you are. So those are the stories we're telling. It's raw, it's honest, and maybe it's exactly what you need to hear. I'm Hillary Georgie, and this is The Journey. So, anyone who owns a small business knows what the difference between surviving and thriving feels like. And obviously, we all aim to thrive. That's why we're excited about our latest partnership with UPS. Our listeners know that whether you're moving your business online or getting into new markets or just trying to make things run faster and more efficiently, small businesses are up against a unique set of challenges. That's why UPS designed innovative tools just for small businesses that are made to help take you to the next level. Learn more about how UPS can get your small business moving forward at ups.com slash pivot. If you had asked a young Amy what she wanted to be when she grew up, she would have given you a slew of answers, all of which were almost completely unrelated. I grew up in a very musical family. I was really into singing and performing at that age. One of my dreams was to maybe be a singer one day. I wanted to be a marine biologist. I was really in love with nature and animals and all of that stuff. I was always balancing like my creative side with my love of the outdoors and nature. As Amy got older, her interests got even more diverse. She studied religion and history in college, but after she finished school, she found her way into an advertising agency. I worked on the Johnson & Johnson account on their over-the-counter drug division, so Tylenol was our big client, and I made a lot of TV ads, and it was a great three years of really learning the corporate ropes and understanding CPG and that whole beast. And then I got the itch to do something entrepreneurial, and it's always been in my spirit. She started a side hustle selling handbags and eventually met Joanna Griffiths, the creator of Nick's Underwear. That's where Amy got her introduction into the world of startups. I think to go from being in a really cushy corporate environment to then jumping into the deep end at a startup, especially one that had such big ambitions out of the gate and was really a true disruptor, was like tough and a grind and insane some days, but also incredibly rewarding. And I really, through that experience, not only learned a ton, but also discovered that this is what I meant to do is be an entrepreneur take a big leap. And I wanted to really start to something of my own. Really, after the four years, it was like, I've been happy being a support person. And now I want to do something for me. Amy took some time to try and figure out what that thing could be. She did some consulting and took time off to have a baby. It was after her child was born that she saw her opportunity. I had this baby and I suddenly became really aware of hand hygiene. People are coming over. I got to make sure their hands are clean if they're going to hold a baby. And 
I'm changing diapers all the time. It's just like a mess. And I was using Purell and I had it all over my house. And I thought, I wonder if actually there is something better. So I started exploring, is there something that smells good? There really wasn't much. And what I was witnessing in other body care categories were real change when it comes to sustainability and formulation and packaging and hair care at the time and deodorant. There were just these incredible things happening in those categories. And sanitizer was just so stagnant and quite frankly, kind of boring and utilitarian. I thought, okay, maybe this is something that makes sense. Maybe this is the next big thing. And I should think about what I would want in a product. And that really was something beautiful that looked nice in my home that I could use and not sort of dread using. And also try to see if I could develop a formula that actually didn't dry out my hands and that smelled really good. And that was the mission out of the gate. It was like six months of like humming and hawing and business plans and decks. And then the pandemic hit. Okay, there is a sign. If I needed a sign to do this, that is it. (laughs) So I got to jump in. And it was really that spring of 2020 that I incorporated and raised money and just really hit the ground running. Amy was ready to go, but there was still a lot to do before Palm could become what she'd envisioned. First up, she wanted to make sure she knew what the branding would look like. She knew that in a world full of hand sanitizer, her brand would have to stand out. I wasn't interested in just white labeling a formula that they had already made. I really wanted to do something different. Here was the vision. I understand it's going to take longer. I know it's going to be more expensive, but this is the core of this product. I cannot just repurpose Purell in a nice bottle. Like I have to do something different. I think that was exciting to them. I think knowing the demand at the time for this kind of product, they thought, oh, okay, this is interesting. I remember calling a packaging supplier that I had never used And I remember just cold calling this rep and he's like, who are you? I convinced him to sort of give me some time. At the end of the day, he was extremely valuable. He ended up connecting me with another supplier and he educated me a lot just through a few phone calls. Things were looking up, but there was still the matter of creating the actual formula for the product in a world of disrupted supply chains and high demand. So how was Amy able to crack the code on a front running product? Find out after the break. Today's podcast is sponsored by UPS. Look, if there's one thing that all small business owners know, it's that keeping customers waiting just doesn't work. So UPS has unveiled their fastest ground shipping ever, getting you to customers in cities across the U.S. up to a day faster. And now, Mission Podcast listeners can save on UPS's fastest ground shipping ever with the code SOAR, S-O-A-R. Small businesses around the country trust UPS to get their orders out the door and delivered every day. Your customers don't have time to wait, and you don't have time to waste. So head to ups.com slash pivot and use the code SOAR, S-O-A-R, to start shipping and saving with UPS's fastest ground ever today. Amy knew she wanted her product to be different. She wanted to create a hand sanitizer that people liked using. That was easier said than done, and she knew she had a lot of work ahead of her. I felt we came to a better end result because we were doing it in kind of a scrappy way. I was then focused on briefing this lab partner that I found in Canada on the formula. So they really hold your hand a lot, especially for people who are new. And at the time I thought, okay, I need it to be this, this, and this. And I want it to smell really good. I wanted it to be actually moisturizing. And I wanted to use a unique moisturizer in the formula beyond what typically is aloe and glycerin or those type of things. So I was working with them and then they did a lot of the legwork from a development perspective. And then they sent me samples to try and then we did a few other iterations, but they nailed it pretty quickly, which surprised me. I think normally development can take a really long time just to get it right. And they nailed it pretty quickly. But for everything that went right, there were several dozen things that went wrong. Launching a business at any time is tricky, but launching one during a pandemic is its own beast entirely. Then one more layer on top of this is the regulatory chaos going on during this early phase of the pandemic where there was such a rush to market with sanitizer and people were breaking rules and people were just 
trying to get sanitizer on shelf and in people's hands at any cost. And what the result was is with the regulators, specifically FDA and Health Canada, were constantly changing their rules, constantly recalling. It was really a very chaotic time for this category. And I was sort of in the background praying that everything that we were doing was going to be okay. I mean, it was today. Hopefully it will be tomorrow. We were a casualty of one change and we did end up having to reorder all of our spout pouches for our refill bags in Canada and issued like new warning labels because they changed their regulations. So it was a whole new level of chaos. But Amy knew what she was getting into. Remember, she'd cut her teeth at Nick's when that was just a startup. I really saw in Joanna what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur. Whether I have that or not, I don't know. But I think what I do have is a learned ability to sort of deal with challenges as they come, try to stay calm, and then also constantly be thinking about how to grow and and how to change and how to adapt and how to be successful. You live and you breathe it. So that's what I witnessed, certainly in Nick's, beyond the chaos. It was a great primer, you know, being able to be in the passenger seat or the co-pilot seat and witness it all in those first four years was extremely valuable because when I'm going into this, experience, I was prepared to a certain degree for what was about to come. So that was helpful for sure. Because of all her experience, Amy felt like she was ready. It was hard, but she knew better than to quit just because there were obstacles. She'd seen firsthand the value of keeping at it. And pretty soon, Palm was ready for the market. She went out and pitched her product to the media and they were loving it. Martha Stewart, we had a lot of great coverage And then also I knew, especially in Canada, I wanted to do wholesale in addition to direct to consumer. My lessons at Nix too, in the early days, it's really hard as a new brand to launch exclusively D2C because especially these days, the cost to acquire customers is so high that you have to be so heavily funded to only be D2C. So I knew that we would need retailers to help not only boost our credibility, but also to help with distribution and get the product into people's hands. And I was confident enough at the time that I knew that if people just tried the product, they'd come back for more because I knew that I had a special formula that was different and that stood out. Amy was right. And Palm's ascent was rapid in Canada. But Amy had her eyes on the U.S. market as well. We worked with Maisonette, Webster. So I think balancing that wholesale strategy and winning a buyer over And again, I had a sales background. I was confident pitching. That was sort of in my wheelhouse more so than like digital marketing. But it's also that landscape has changed so much. So I think those are the two things out of the gate, combination of PR, and it's sort of grown organically from there. So what's next for Palm? Launching a brand during a pandemic has given Amy a unique perspective, and she feels like the business will soon be ready to take the next step. What we're seeing is the rise of these real specialists who are picking a body part and being like, that's our focus. We're really good at that. For example, Acton Acre, we are all about scalp care. Fur, we're all about skin care for down there. Like there's this real focus on these brands. We're not everybody's every product. We are really focusing on a few key essentials to care for that one body part. So I see Palm as being that for hand care. So I think there's an opportunity for us to really distinguish ourselves as the hand care specialist. So sanitizer was our first big hero product. And now we're moving into other everyday essentials. We've just released an exfoliating hand cleanser and a probiotic hand balm. These are formulas we, again, worked for months and months to develop, being really thoughtful about our ingredients and about our packaging and about that whole story. And then now we're looking to even more like clinical ingredients and clinical products and looking at the needs of the market and the whole anti-aging side of hand care. And that's where we're headed as a brand. But no matter where Palm heads next, one thing is certain. Amy will always make sure that her products stand out against the crowded market and that she'll follow her journey wherever it leads. For me, I'm much more flowy, like jump from here to there, see what happens. And maybe that's another trait of an entrepreneur too, of just letting things come to you in a way beyond making them happen. I think at a certain point you have to make it happen, but then there's also this journey that just takes you places. The Journey is created by Mission.org and sponsored by UPS. To learn more about the show or mission, visit Mission.org. 
And to learn more about how UPS can help your business, visit ups.com slash pivot.